So what are some different kinds of things that make a URL structure good and bad? So how we used to have an old dynamic URL is it kind of changes too frequently for the search engines to keep on track of. So the first thing you have is your protocol, or your HTTP. And then you have your subdomain, which could be a dub dub dub, or it could be store dot, blog bot, blog dot, etc. Uh, then you have your domain, which is actually for us vertical measures. For you it's probably your company name or your important keywords that you want in there. And then you have your top level domain, which could be a .com, .co, .co .uk. It's whatever you kind of use to keep track. And then you have your page or file name, so .com slash blog or slash subfolder. After that you actually have the file extension. So it could be .php, .html, whatever you're using to kind of code that. And then after that you have your CGI parameters, which could be a pound sign, hashtag, or a series of numbers to kind of lock it all down in place. For a new actual SEO URL, you're going to want to have a lot of the same things, but it's also going to be a little bit different. So you're going to have your protocol, HTTP, your subdomain, your dub dub dub, your blog dot, store dot, etc. And then your actual domain, so your company name, keyword, for us it's vertical measures, your top level domain, so your dot com, dot co, your folders and paths, so slash blog, slash store, and then your actual page with the keywords in it. So for this it would be URL structures and then your named anchor. So it's going to tell you where exactly on the page you're going to go. But instead of using a series of numbers, it's going to actually be a pound sign and it's going to say start at the stop, start at the top, start at the middle, etc. So some things to kind of keep in mind when you're uh, designing your URL structures for SEO purposes is when you make a folder or subdomain, all search engines kind of read them the same way now. So there used to be some debate about there being a subdomain blog versus a subfolder blog. Well now it's all kind of the same, so you don't need to worry about that too much. It's kind of whatever your personal preference is and whatever is the cleanest for your users. The next thing you want to remember is that you need to be wary of length. If something is too long, it's going to be difficult to copy and paste over, and if you have too many dynamic parameters in there, it's going to be confusing for people. If it's also too long, then Google can't actually get to the inside of that information. It wants to make sure that it's only indexing things that are useful for people to actually find. So if it's buried under subfolder after subfolder, it's not actually going to index your content and it's going to be not appearing in the search engines. The next thing to make sure is that your URL is actually relevant to your page title. So when you copy it over, your page title should be, for this, an example would be URL structures. So when you copy it over onto a forum, an email, etc., people can actually see what they're clicking onto instead of just having a string of dynamic parameters. So this also will act as anchor text once you add the piece of code. So it'll say, you know, your whole URL structure and in there will be your keyword of correct URL structure. When people search correct URL structure, it's that exact match that you kind of are looking for. And the last thing that you want to just keep in mind is that when you're adding words into your page title, you need to make sure that you're separating using hyphens or dashes. Otherwise, if you leave it open, browsers and different people can kind of read that differently. So it could be filled in with a percent 20, and then when you copy it over, it can't read it because it's not what it's used to seeing. So just make sure you actually set that space difference as a hyphen or a dash. And that's all I have for today.